Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation on building power system network models automatically in MATLAB and Simulink. My name is Graham Dudgeon, I am an industry manager at MathWorks serving the utilities and energy industry. Simulink is known primarily as a click and drag environment for the development of models. However, you are also able to construct models automatically using MATLAB scripts. What we see on the top left here is me clicking and dragging some basic components across and connecting them up using the, the click and drag technique. And on the bottom right I wrote a script which constructs the same model automatically. So you can see here that the automated build is faster. I actually slowed it down significantly as well so you could see it happening. And so there is definitely a time advantage to building models automatically. And of course the construction of power system models lends itself well to this technique because network descriptions typically exist in other files. There are three steps from moving from the network description to the model. The network description can be contained in an external data source such as spreadsheets, text files or other power system file formats. We can then read that data using MATLAB from which we then create a data structure which the model building script then uses in order to create the model within SIM power systems. The example we're going to be looking at is the IEEE 123 node test feeder. I would like to acknowledge Bill Kersting's original citation. For more information on this test feeder you can follow the URLs shown here. First thing I'll do is show you the, the data structure called it data and this was constructed by reading in Excel files, so the network data for the IEEE node test feeder are contained within Excel files. I'll show you one of the files in just a minute. So you can see here that the network information is organized, loads, lines, configurations, buses, breakers, etc. So we can see from the table sizes that we have 85 loads, so let's actually look into this a little bit more. I can access the load data by typing data.loads and let's look at loads 20 to 25. So 20 colon 25 to access rows 20 to 25, comma colon then to access all the columns. So you can see here we have information on the, the bus that the load is connected to, the load type, and also what the P and Q values are for each phase. And where those values are zero that indicates that phase does not exist there. So for for the first load there on bus number 31 is defined for phase C only. We can also see the load type is Y connected constant PQ load. And so with this information we use this information to pick up appropriate load blocks which are then integrated into the system level model. So let's just look at the, the Y connected PQ. I'm just going to quickly go up, go down here sorry and go to Y const PQ double click on this. So these are predefined blocks that I put together. So let's look at the three phase one. Double click. You can see here that I've got three constant PQ loads which are then receiving PQ information. So more on the data input later. But for now I'll just double click on the constant PQ loads. I will press spacebar so you can see how this was constructed. Basically a very simple implementation of a constant PQ load. Let me close this down. I'll now open up the Excel file that contains the load information so we can take a look at that. So here is how the data looks in Excel. You can see there it's very similar format to how it shows up in MATLAB. And so we use read table commands which can basically read Excel files and bring those straight into the MATLAB environment and construct data tables like this. Let's look at the high level again. You can also look at buses, data.buses. Let's look at the first five buses. So you can see here we've got the bus number, X and Y coordinate, the number of phases associated with that bus and uh, the phases as well which are active on that bus. And it's this information which is then used to construct the model. To construct the model I wrote a number of functions which would build the model piece by piece. So this is the main script create IEEE123 and as we just go through this, you can see we place the buses, we add the lines, we add the breakers, we add the loads, we add the source, we add the capacitors, 
we set the onload tap changer setting so I've set it to fix tap so I can do a direct comparison with the, the benchmark results we define outputs set regulator data etc so basically a sequential process of building this model up so let's run the script create IEEE 123 see I'm wrapping this with TikTok so I can time the construction of the model See these warnings here are actually because it's reading the Excel files that contain the network data and it's having to make the, the variable names valid for MATLAB. So that's simply what that warning was. So we can see the network beginning to build here. The buses were placed first. Now I, I do get asked when I show this where I got the XY coordinates for these buses because they're not included within the benchmark data for this network. What I'd done is I loaded an image of the network into MATLAB and then I used a function called gInput where I could manually click on the nodes of the of the image to collect the XY data. Now if you're doing this with other distribution system models you would typically have XY information or, or GPS coordinates of the, the equipment. If you don't have coordinates, you can build a network model under a subsystem and it doesn't have to look like the real network. The most important thing is that the connectivity is correct. But visually, it, it does look nicer, of course, when you have the, the correct XY coordinate system in place. So we can see here it's finished placing all the components and it's now saving it as a new name, IEEE123Complete. It will just take a moment to do that and when it's saved we will then take a look at some important elements of putting models together of this scale which can have hundreds of measurement signals and there are specific techniques that you bring to bear to, to be able to handle those. So first of all, let me zoom in up in this corner here. So a couple of observations here. What we have is we're feeding inputs in through a, a root level input port. Now the inputs that are getting fed in are actually the PQ information for the loads. And so this allows us to do time series inputs for load changes. And so this is very important for Monte Carlo simulations where we're changing the, the scenarios of the system. So the load values are being defined within MATLAB as, as time series and we can then feed them straight in to the model. So that's the first thing we need to do to make this process more efficient. Secondly, when we're saving data, you can see here we're saving voltage and current and we're saving those into map files using two file blocks. Double click, open up to file. So the benefit of this is that simulation data is not going into RAM and so you're not going to get out of memory problems when you're doing extended simulation. So two file blocks are absolutely essential for this. Final point is where is this data going to in inputs and where is it coming from with voltage outputs and current outputs? So if I double click on inputs, we can see here that we have tags. If I double click on the first one, so here's the go to tag for load one and it's phase A information that's being fed to load one. You can see here the corresponding from block. If I click on that, it will open up where that signal is going to. So it's going to load one, which is phase A. This is all automatically taken care of. The from and go to tags are being constructed automatically, connected automatically, and so it makes life a lot easier for transferring data into the model and then obviously extracting data out of the model. If I come out of this and just show you an example of the voltage outputs, double click and I'll press spacebar. I'll just zoom in on this. So control plus. So you can see the same things happening there and there's the automatic construction of, of from and they're picking up the data coming out of the measurement. So I can go to the voltage from bus 78, go to the corresponding go to and there we see it, the, the voltage measurements from bus 78, three phase in this particular case and that's being fed through which will ultimately then get into the, the map file during a simulation run. I'll press spacebar so we can see the whole model. Now what I'm going to do is run this. So the loads are defined as in the benchmark. So just constant value loads for a very short simulation duration. I'm then going to run a script which compares it with the benchmark results. So we press play here and then that will just run through. It will compile the model and then, and then execute the model for a short period of time. And then what I do is I just pick off the steady state values, 
that is equivalent to load flow and we'll do a comparison with the benchmark. So it's just going through the evaluation of block parameters right now. And so that's, that's the other thing to mention here as well, the configuration of the, the lines. Every, every parameter within this model is being automatically taken care of in the model construction process. So you, you don't have to, you know, double click on blocks and populate these blocks yourself. I'll just double click on one of the, the line blocks once this is finished. So if I double click on this, you can see here from to configuration and length. It's all being fed into each block. It's all being populated automatically. Simulation is complete. So we're now going to take a look at the comparison between the simulation we just run and the published benchmark results. I have a script here that I've written, compare benchmark voltage and current. I'm not just going to run this. What I'm actually going to do is use publish. So publish, if I just go to edit publishing options, we can generate this as a report. It's going to be an HTML format. I'm going to set include code to false so it doesn't echo the code as it generates the report. I can then now publish this and I'll get an HTML report which will show us a comparison of the, the output of the SimPower system simulation and the published benchmark results. So this will just take a moment to run. And it shows some additional figures as well to show how the comparisons were done. And when it's done with that, it'll then generate the HTML and here we are. So we have hyperlinks to the, the sections. So we can go to voltage comparison, for example, and we can see here that in every case, the relative error of voltage with the benchmark result was below 0.1% relative error. We can see some other statistics here, box plots here, to show the, the mean value of the error and also the min and max gives you some more statistical insight into the comparison. So what we have seen here is that MATLAB can read power system network data from external sources. The example we, we used was Excel, but we can also read in other power system file formats. The power system network models can be constructed automatically, and the models can be readily configured to allow playback of measured data if you want to replay data through your simulation. You can also run multiple scenarios on multiple cores, and you can also readily vary the fidelity of component models depending on the type of simulation that you need to conduct. Thank you for listening.